Hello viewers. In today's video, I will describe the para amino benzoic acid or the PABA. Most commonly it is known as PABA. You must have heard this PABA or this term, this, this name many a times while studying pharmacology or chemistry. Especially in the chapter of sulfonamide. You must have gone through the mechanism of action of sulfonamide in which this PABA terminology will come. The sulfonamides drugs, they inhibit the incorporation of PABA. But have you ever tried to look about PABA? What is it? I guess no. So today's video is dedicated for this para amino benzoic acid. In the following video, in the next video, I'll be describing about the mechanism of action of the sulfonamides and the cotrimoxazole. So, this para amino benzoic acid, it's a natural compound. It's a natural compound present in a folic acid, present in folic acid and the sources can be or it can be found in grains, egg, meat, milk and many other uh, sources, many other food materials. Coming to the uses, most commonly this para amino benzoic acid substance or compound or chemical used to be there in most of the sunscreen preparation earlier days. But after 2019, it was like very much reported that it produces many adverse effects on the skin and that's why nowadays the sunscreen will not or sunscreen uh, does not contain this para amino benzoic acid. There are many off label uses but FDA has given some uh, has listed down the condition where it should be used. So we will discuss that. Sunscreen, so it is approved for the use of sunscreen. It is approved for the use of sunscreen. Still there are few um, sunscreens in which this paramana benzoic acid is added. And this is effective when during sweating. So this will be effective as a sunscreen during sweating. But when the skin is submerged in water, that time it will not be effective for its uh, cause. The next is uh, Peyronie's disease, which is uh, which is uh, uh, which is a penile fibrosis. Then we have scleroderma, where there is hard or thickened skin. Next we have dermatomyositis, where you will see that there are inflamed muscles are there. Then we have morphia where you can see the discolored hard skin and pem figures where there is blisters on the skin. Blisters or the pus filled uh, blisters are there on the skin. Then we have vitiligo where there can be the loss of melanocyte. The color the fades off. Color goes off. The color of the skin is not there. So that is vitiligo. Now these star I have put in the these uses. That means FDA has approved this para amino benzoic acid for these conditions, but there are still very limited data which which can support the use of this. Then other uses where there are very few, very scarce data or no data for the effectiveness of para amino benzoic acid for arthritis, anemia, constipation, headache and hair loss. So many more researches, clinical trial needs to be there to say that it can be used or to get the approval for using this drug, drug or medicine or compound for the use in this condition. Next coming to adverse effect. Now, before going to the adverse effect, we'll see this, this structure. The structure is this one. Here is para, para position, there is amino group. So, para amino benzoic acid. Para, para group, para place, para amino benzoic and acid. So, this is the structure. 
एडवर्स इफेक्ट माइल्ड एडवर्स इफेक्ट इट प्रोड्यूसेस लाइक स्किन इरिटेशन नोजिया वोमिटिंग स्टमक अपसेट डायरिया एंड एपेटाइटलस फ्यू केसेस आर सीन वेयर इफ इफ मोर देन ट्वेल्व ग्राम ऑफ पैरामाइनोबेंजिक एसिड इज गिवेन और टेकन ओरली देन इट मे प्रोड्यूस द लीवर किडनी एंड ब्लड रिलेटेड डिसऑर्डर्स then coming to contraindication or precautions high doses per oral is not advocated it has resulted death of many children next is person having kidney disease should not take because it worsens the kidney problem and for pregnancy and feeding the the safety data is very scarce and that's why this drug should be avoided for the lady who is pregnant or breastfeeding now we will see the inter, the interaction in the interaction we will see that it is interacted well with sulfonamide or sulfadrenaline what happens is the mechanism of sulfonamide is that it inhibits the incorporation of incorporation of paba paba is utilized by microorganism for its survival what happens is like pava is converted to folic acid tetrahydrohydro and tetrahydrofolic acid and then that is utilized for its survival sulfonamide what it does it inhibits the utilization of pava so if you take pava from outside that means there is more of pava which cannot be inhibited or utilization of the same cannot be inhibited by sulfonamide so that the microorganism can utilize the paba very well and the effectiveness of sulfonamide might will be decreased the second is with cortisone cortisone is degraded inside the body but if paba is given along with it reduces the breakdown it reduces the metabolism of cortisone by the body and thus there is increased concentration of cortisol in the body which will lead to increase effect and adverse effect of cortisol so this was the interaction hope this would be a, a very useful explanation for para amino benzoic acid thank you so much